Hello again. In the previous video, we've seen how to fully fill um, Sudoku Grid, and that was also saved to the Solution tab. In this video, we will be removing numbers randomly, but following some rules to leave the gaps of the of the final Sudoku puzzle. So let's go to the Visual Basic Editor and insert a new module. I'm going to call it Puzzle. And here we'll have our macro called Create Puzzle. We will be using some of the variables we've used, we've used before. So I'm going to copy to save some time here. We will have the num and the loop count variable, and we will also use cell row and cell count. So we have declared that already here, and, and now we are going to start a do loop. So we will loop, uh, and each time we will pick randomly a number that we want to remove. So we use a randomize function here, randomize, and, and then um, we will randomly pick a cell row and a cell column, and we will use the same function we used earlier. The upper limit will be 10, the lower limit will be two, plus one, and then plus the lower limit. Okay, that will give a, a row, a random number between between 2 and 10, and we're gonna do the same for cell call. So that will give us a random number between 2 and 10 for rows, and a random number between 2 and 10 for columns. Uh, so in, th in that cell, we are going to have our number equal the value of whatever is in that um, in that cell, cell row, cell call. Okay, now, um, yeah, we, we use the value, so the value will give us a zero in case it is empty. So now we say if number is different than zero, okay, because if it's empty, it will be zero. If, so if it's empty, we cannot remove that number. But if it's different than zero, then here we're gonna do some checks to see if we can remove the number. So I'm gonna introduce a new, um, a new loop here, and it will be for U cell uh, from two to 10. So this is actually going to loop from uh, um, two, two to 10 for both for rows and for columns to check that when we remove that number, that number cannot be placed in any other uh, location. So let me let me come back here and give you an example. So for example, if we pick randomly the num th this location, which is row five, so cell row would be five, and then call is four, cell call would be four, that would be this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, highlight it. Um, if we pick this number, then we want to check if in this uh, column and in this row, there is an empty space where we could place the number three. That's the purpose of introducing this new loop uh, for U cell. And here, if cells U cell cell call is empty, then we will check if that number could be placed in the same um, column and in the same um, in in a given column and a given quadrant. So we do that with the worksheet function count if if for rows that would be you sell if it's zero if if that number is not there, that, that could actually compromise the solution because that it could be placed somewhere else. And then we also want to check um, if that number 
with the count if function could be in the in the quadrant. So for that, I introduced this R QRNG function that will give us the the range for a quadrant for a given uh, row and column. So for a given cell, and if the number is not there, so if it's zero, so if both are zero, that could actually compromise our solution. So we want to introduce here um, a, var a, a Boolean variable called comp, and that would be true. So if, if both are, are zero, that could compromise our solution. So that would be uh, then, uh, true. And here we can end the, um, the condition. And that would actually be for rows. And we're gonna do, we, we will do the same for columns. Um, so, but before that, let me just copy the, the QRNG function. I have it actually here to save some time. And I'm gonna copy that in the same module down here and as I said this function is gonna get the, the is gonna give the range for a given row R stands for row and C stands for column and depending on the row and column is gonna give us the the um, the range of the quadrant okay so now let's actually copy all of this and check the same for columns. Oops. What is that? For columns. I'm gonna copy that, but I'm gonna change now. So this this will be cell row and this will be U cell. And here instead of rows we will have columns for U cell and here instead of that that will be cell row and U cell okay and then here we can go to the next cell and now we want to after after this loop is complete, we want to check if comp is true or false. If it's false, so if it's not true, if, 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 if that number, removing that number doesn't compromise the solution, then we can finally cell call, cell row, cell, cell call value equals nothing. We remove that number. Okay, now to make sure comp is, is false after every loop, we have to initialize that up here before that loop starts. So here we will write comp equals false. And we also want to end the if um, statement here. Now, before we loop, we will be um, using the loop count variable in the same way we, we did in the previous video. And if the loop count is greater than 299, then we exit the do loop. Finally, here we loop. Okay, let's just declare the variables we've been using integer and that was comp as a boolean and now we can run the macro and see how it works let me just remove that color here go and play there we go and that's our sudoku it's a rather easy sudoku if you want to have 
more difficulty you can use some additional conditions and and please check the the sudoku generator in in excel macro fan i'm gonna leave the link in the description so you'll see how to create more difficult uh, sudokus and that's how we create um, sudokus in excel using vba macros thanks for watching